Let's look at this example problem to see how to involve work in this conservation of energy concept. So what work does is work adds or removes energy from our system. So instead of just having, say, kinetic energy equal to potential energy, now we'll have work to change the total energy. So we'll start the problem off with some kind of energy to begin with, and that's its total energy. And then we'll either add or subtract energy, and that'll equal the final energy. When we add or subtract energy, we don't call it add or subtract energy, and we don't call it the change in energy. Physicists call it work. So work is really their fancy way of saying the change in energy. Okay, let's look at this example problem to see what I mean. At the bottom, I've got a ball that's traveling at 5 meters per second. The ball has a mass of 2 kilograms. And the ball is going to climb 2 meters. And then at the top, it's going to have some unknown speed. But I have two forces acting on this ball. One of the forces is going to be here. Let's see if I can highlight this a little bit better. It's going to be there. So that's going to act against the ball. So that will remove energy from the starting energy of the ball. And the second force is going to be here. And that is going to add energy to the ball because it's going with the motion of the ball. So it's going to add energy compared to the beginning. So what I do in this, previously what I would do is I would say some of the energy at the beginning, so let's say some of the energy, in this case let's call it the bottom, and then I would say equals the energy at the top. But now I've got these outside forces, whatever this 50 newtons is that acts for 1 meter, and whatever the 200 newton force is that acts for 2 meters. So I've got these forces I've got to deal with. All right, the 50 meter force is going to go the opposite direction of the motion. So the ball is going in this direction here. This force goes the opposite direction, so it's going to remove energy from the starting point. So what I'm going to write down here is minus work, and I don't have any other way of labeling this, so I'm just going to call it 50 uh, just to label it. And then as the ball goes up the incline, the ball is going up the incline. That's my assumption that it's going to continue upwards. And I've got this 200 newton force for 2 meters, and it's going the same direction the ball is. So what that's going to do is that's going to add energy. So we say plus work. Plus W, and I'll subscript 200 because I don't know how else to identify it. And I don't have any other outside forces, so that will be equal to the total energy at the top. And then when I look at this and break it down, I break it down the same way I did before. And by break it down, I mean insert my basic energies. So when I look at this, I'm going to say kinetic energy at the start, which is at the bottom, plus potential energy due to gravity at the bottom, minus the work of the 50 newton force, plus the work of the 200 newton force. And that's going to equal the kinetic energy at the top, plus the potential energy at the top. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through my usual set of questions for my kinetic and potential energy to figure out which of these I have and don't have. At the bottom, is it moving? And the answer is yes, so I'll keep that energy. At the bottom, is it above the location's height? No, it's the height zero. That's going to go away. The works I won't do anything with. At the top, is it moving? We think so. And the potential energy at the top, does it have? is it higher than the other location? And it is, so I'll keep that. All right, that's great. Now that means that i got to write my equations out. 1 half mv squared minus the work of the 50. Whoops, let's undo that. That's going to be f 50 d for the 50 plus whatever the force is here times the distance of that 200 uh, newton force. And that equals 1 half mv squared at the top plus mgh at the top. Usually I tell you to isolate the variables before putting in the unknowns, but right now I'm going to tell you that you can take a shortcut here or, or make it a little bit easier for you. Throw in your numbers and units and then suppress the units and do the math. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Notice that I cannot subtract, I'm sorry, cannot divide out the mass because um, if I look at this, FD, these two FDs, there's no M in those expressions. So I can't take out the mass. So the mass has got to stay there this time. Okay, let's start over here. Whoops, got to change my pen. Here we go. Start over here. One half uh, mass, two kilograms times the velocity squared, five meters per second squared minus 50 newtons times the distance, which uh, in this case, the distance is one meter. So I'll do that. 1 meter plus 
200 newtons times its distance, and that distance is there, it's 2 meters. So that'll be 2 meters. And that equals 1 half 2 kilograms times my unknown at the top plus 2 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared times two meters. Awesome. Okay, let's see. Next, it's easier for me if I just look get rid of some of the units here. So I'm going to rewrite this without the units this time. Uh, so that's going to be one half two times five meters per second squared. Well, I know that's 25, so I'm going to go ahead and write that out. Minus, I'll do a little bit of math along the way. 50 newtons in one meter that's 50. I'm not doing too much math because I, I just want to do one, kind of keep it simple here, plus 200 times 2, get rid of the units here, 400, that equals 1 half times 2, that's just 1 times v squared, so that'll be v squared, plus 2 times 9.8 times 2 again, so get rid of the unit, so 2 times 9.8 times 2, that's going to be 4 times 9.8, and uh, 4 times 9.8. So I'm just going to go ahead and write what that equals. That's 39.2. So I'm trying not to do too much math at once while I'm suppressing the units because I don't want to get lost in it all. But uh, over here I can see that the 2 times um, 2, times two that's going to go away. It can be just 25, so I'll stick with that. So now I've got 25 minus 50, so 25 minus 50 is negative 25, plus 400, so that's going to be 375 is equal to v squared plus 39.2. So v is equal to the square root of 375 plus 39.2 and Eighteen point three two meters per second. All right. So hopefully you can see how the work is handled in this kind of problem. So when I'm looking at this, I can see that when the work force times distance is the opposite direction of motion, I remove energy. When force times distance, the work is in the same direction of the motion, I add energy. Let's try one more example problem. So in this example problem, I've got a bow and arrow, and I'm going to shoot this arrow that's 0.1 kilograms until it gets to its highest height, and I want to know what the highest height is. So in order to do this, I need to find two locations to compare where I know the height and the velocity. One location will be here at the very bottom. The other location will be up here at the very top. So those will be my two locations, and the reason why I picked the top is because I knew at the highest height, and well, that occurs when the velocity is equal to zero. And of course, at the bottom, well, that's easy. And we want to pull back a bow I know that that is going to be at rest, and that is the lowest height, so that'll be pretty straightforward. All right, so now let's figure out this problem. Uh, I need to sum up my energies, just like I did before, so I'll start with that. All right, so that'll be sum of the energy at the bottom, because that'll be my starting energy, and then I either add or subtract work what happens here is I got a force that's going up and I've got a displacement that's also going up so because the two go in the same direction that's going to add energy to my arrow which kind of makes sense plus the work of the bow and that's going to equal the total energy at the highest point and remember the word for the highest point is apogee because apogee means the farthest away and that's when the arrow is the farthest away from the ground so that's our apogee all right, then I'll define what energies I'm looking at. That'll be kinetic energy plus potential energy due to gravity plus the work of the bow equals kinetic energy plus potential energy due to gravity. Then I'll go through my questions. At the bottom, is it moving? No, think about it. When I pull the bow back, I'm holding up my hand still. So that is actually going to go away. 
is it at the is it higher than the other location? It is not higher than the other location. That goes away. At the highest point, let's see, work I don't do anything with. At the highest point, is it moving? No, because that's the definition of apogee and, a, and the highest point. So that goes away. Wow, this gets really easy fast. And that's equal to potential energy. All right, so let's look at our formulas here. That means I have the force of the bow times its distance equals m g h. Ooh, this would be nice. So I'm looking for the height. Um, this is so simple. I, actually, I could I just isolate it with the variables instead of putting in the numbers right now. So h is equal to f d divided by m g. Well, I like that. Simple one. Okay, f d. Let's see. So that's going to be 50 newtons times I pulled the bow back one and a half meters, long arms, divided by the mass of the arrow, 0 0.1 kilograms, times um, g, 9.80 meters per second squared. And then when I actually do the math, I get a height of 76.5 meters. Okay, well that makes sense because all the energy in the bow that's putting into the system is going into the arrow to give it its maximum height where it reaches a speed, or a final speed of zero. Oh, shoot.